I think it was the video where I experimented with phase plugs that I got a comment asking if I thought about adding a super tweeter to my uh, new speakers that I just finished building, the open baffle ones. And uh, I never, <laughs> I've never thought about super tweeters because my hearing has gone up in the top end. There's no bringing that back, short of magic. Um, what I did consider was adding a rear facing tweeter to complete the dipole pattern of the open baffle speaker. Currently, there's a tweeter facing forward, but there's no high frequency content going backwards and having the backward facing tweeter would fix that. So I thought about doing that and I probably will experiment with that at some point in the future. But in the meantime, I thought I would quickly uh, mock something up here and kind of demonstrate what a super tweeter will do um, or do wrong with your with your speaker. Or at least I'm going to find out like firsthand myself and, and you guys can come along with me because I've never actually tried this before. I know I know what it's supposed to do, but until you do it yourself and see the severity of the problem, then you really can't say for certain, right? Unless you read books and, and you know, go by their examples and all that. And, you know, I've done that, but, you know, I like I'm a hands on guy. And I thought it would be interesting to demonstrate. So I made this um, thing here. <laughs> it's just a piece of half inch plywood with a regular tweeter, except it doesn't have to be any kind of a special tweeter uh, mounted on it, it's facing forward like that. And I, I have a coil on here right now, but this was added after. Uh, the original was just a single capacitor, 2.4 microfarads, and uh, that's a first order filter, and it's around 8K. So everything below 8K is sloping down, all right? So the first thing I did was I measured the ELAC here as it is on this stand. I set the microphone one meter from it with the microphone on axis with the tweeter, just normal procedure for measuring speakers. And I ran a sweep and you can see the results of that here. And the remarkable thing about these speakers is how flat they are. It's almost ruler flat from 300 right on up. Um, there's a small dip at around 18K, but that's uh, the horn thing again. You may not realize it, but there's a horn in the ELAC. You take off this uh, metal grill right here and you can see that there's a horn there. So that's responsible for that dip around 18K. Now, the next thing I did was I took this thing and I put it on top without the coil, didn't have the coils, only the first order filter. And I ran a sweep again, just measuring this alone, not the speaker with it. And you can see that it peaks around 11 or 12K. And of course it slopes off from 8K down and it also rolls off slightly towards the high end. So I thought this was going to be a fairly good candidate for something that approaches a super tweeter anyway. So I wired it in parallel with the speaker and I ran another sweep. And right off the bat, you can see that the response has humped up quite a bit in the high end. But also, if you look at the range from 1K up to 4K, you can see that it's down slightly. And it's also quite a bit more wavy than the original measurement. And that waviness is the result of what's known as comb filtering. That's where you have two speakers playing the same signal, um, not close enough together, where they'll interfere with each other and reinforce some frequencies and cancel other ones. So the tweeter on the ELAC is pretty close to the top and that makes it pretty close to this when it's put on top. Still not close enough to avoid comb filtering altogether, but I thought it would move it sideways a little bit further out and run the sweep again, just to show the effect a little bit better. And you can see that the peaks and the troughs in the 1K to 4K range are even deeper now. So basically when you add a super tweeter, you're doing two things. You're bumping up that high frequency um, response, which may be what you're looking for and like that. But the unintended consequence of that is 
some cone filtering in the lower frequencies. It depends upon the overlap though, and that's the reason why I added this coil to change this to a second order filter. And this is crossing around 6,000, a little bit lower. But I ran a sweep again with this in place. And as you can see, it didn't completely fix the problem, but it did make an improvement in that range from 1K up to 4K. So if you're gonna add something like this, uh, my recommendation uh, for what that's worth is to put it on like located as close to the other tweeter as you possibly can and also uh, at least go with a second order filter on it higher if possible uh, the the more of that lower frequency stuff you can cut off the less comb filtering you're going to have